Hello, and welcome to the very first session of the Donahue Group, uh, a new Sheboygan talk show. Uh, we're going to be uh, visiting with you uh, from time to time in one half hour segments. We've gathered together some of Sheboygan County's best and brightest to talk about issues relating to the city, to the county, and, and to the state to some extent. And who knows, someday we may just la launch into national uh, issues. But for now, we're pretty uh, content with staying uh, here in our own state of Wisconsin. My name is Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm a lawyer here in town and uh, enjoy, as all lawyers do, talking about issues. I'm going to briefly introduce our other uh, uh, panelists or participants and then ask them just to say a little bit about themselves and, and then we're gonna take it from there because today is primary day and we have lots of uh, interesting things to talk about. Uh, to my right is Ken Risto, uh, Tom Paneski, and Cal Potter. Cal, do you just wanna start, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're here? Well, thank you for including me in your, your esteemed group. We uh, have done this before on, when I was in the legislative arena, and uh, we've always had uh, an enjoyable time uh, putting on these local programs, and I'm glad that you've taken the initiative to, uh, to do this. Uh, my history is, goes back to the time when I uh, was a school teacher. I was a social studies teacher at Plymouth High School uh, from the late 60s to 1975. And then I was elected to the State Assembly and then to the State Senate and served about 24 years between the two houses and then moved on to the Department of Public Construction having been appointed by John Benson as an assistant superintendent position and then reappointed to that uh, by Elizabeth Burmaster, the present incumbent in, in that office. And just recently, after uh, about 36 years of public service, I've decided to uh, embark upon some mostly retirement, although I do dabble in a number of things, so I'm somewhat employed, plus uh, almost full-time on boards and panels, I kind of think I, this is my new job. So I, I enjoy uh, my new role, but uh, I think I bring to this program a perspective from the education community, as well as the political arena, plus uh, somewhat from the state bureaucracy and being uh, sort of the recipient of the edicts of the state legislature, having been a state agency employee as well. Very good. Tom? Uh, and I echo what Cal said. Thank you for uh, suggesting I be part of this group. I hope I can contribute uh, something uh, of interest to this group and to the community. Uh, I'm from Kansas City, Kansas originally, and I came here back in, in 1969. I work at the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan campus here, which is hosting this uh, program. I've been here uh, for 36 years. I'm a professor of mathematics. Along the way, I've done different things. Uh, I've uh, campaigned uh, for people in, in local elections and uh, governor elections, and then I decided to run myself, and I ran for alderman in 1979. Uh, City of Sheboygan First District and was elected in 1979 and then I was alderman for 14 years serving on various committees. Uh, I voluntarily retired because I, I got burned out so to speak uh, at uh, some of the issues and working with working with city government uh, is taxing. <laughs> to, <laughs> not literally. <laughs> That's a pun. In so many ways. In so many ways. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm more active now in, uh, so it was kind of a relief to be away from city politics for a while. Uh, but now I'm kind of getting interested again. Uh, currently I'm uh, a chair of the Department of Mathematics for the University of Wisconsin Colleges, but I follow local politics. Uh, I'm, I'm active in the uh, in uh, federal politics. Uh, to give you a sense of who I am, in 1988, I was, uh, I was one of a group of seven people who uh, kind of sponsored Jesse Jackson. Remember Jesse Jackson was running for uh, mm. president at the time, and he visited the city, and uh, he's at the uh, armory, and I had the opportunity to introduce him and shake his hand and give him some Sheboygan brats and everything else. And in 2004, I was an avid President Bush fan, so. I've done the spectrum, so maybe I could provide a perspective to this group. Great. Ken? Uh, I'm Ken Risto. I'm uh, a lifelong native of Sheboygan. I uh, was raised here, left only for four years to go to Carroll College, and uh, received a political science degree there, and, uh, 
in a history degree and then uh, decided to go rather to law school, go to uh, go into education. I've been uh, at the Sheboygan Area School District for, I believe this is my 22nd year. Um, currently I teach in the morning uh, over at South High School and then I spend the afternoon coordinating social studies. So like Cal, uh, my roots are in social studies. I got interested in politics. Um, I was a product of Catholic education and in those days uh, with, with the shadow of President Kennedy's death, um, public service was something that uh, people were supposed to aspire to. Mm -hmm. And I worked in Robert Kennedy's campaign as a 7th or 8th grader and uh, later Eugene McCarthy's campaign and George McGovern's campaign and um, it took me about 25 years to work for a campaign that actually won. <laughs> uh, but and that was just once, right? No, I think, <laughs> no, I think, it, was, I think it really was just once. <laughs> yeah, there and, you go. And, uh, but I did work on a couple of school board campaigns the last couple of years with some people <clears> and uh, some other local races. So. Um, have a great interest in, in politics and uh, I'm looking forward to the discussions here. I think that, you know, the, being called a, uh, what was the phrase you used for us? It's an esteemed group. I mean, the truth died in this series about two minutes into the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> and the first pun was in five minutes. So. But I'm looking, forward to, I'm looking forward to talking with all of you. But we're still on the air, so I consider that to be a good sign. My name is Mary Lynn Donahue. Um, I'm a lawyer. Uh, I've been in private practice uh, in Sheboygan since 1990, although I grew up here, a graduate of uh, Sheboygan North High School. And um, I think like all of us <clears throat> have just found politics and the political life as well as public service to be of, of tremendous interest. And I've worked on a bunch of political campaigns. I've been pretty steady in my, in my views of things but, uh, over the years, but uh, have also served, uh, I was on the Sheboygan Area uh, School District Board of Education for a number of years, served as president and also the Police and Fire Commission here in, uh, in the city of Sheboygan. So just have a sense of, you know, the one, the importance of who we elect to office, the importance of what elected officials and all the people who work for various municipalities, the importance of their work, and uh, I, it's just interesting stuff. So I, I think we're going to have some interesting discussions uh, uh, as time goes on. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, one of the things that we did talk about is that of great interest to us in this particular show is that we represent a lot of different views. and. Uh, uh, Almost none of us agree on everything, and so I think just for that reason alone, it's going to be a, an interesting discussion. So we're going to start out, uh, we're taping on primary day, and three of us have our I voted buttons on, and um, well, Cal... I voted too, but I didn't get a button, so I feel deprived. <laughs> <laughs> if I known, I brought you an extra one. Yeah. <laughs> you had plenty of You'd them. You'd have voted twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of sticker twice fraud. <laughs> that, then we'd have sticker fraud, and it'd be another new issue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but... Uh, we have an interesting time in the city of Sheboygan uh, in terms of our political life because we have a number of people running for mayor and we have three primaries just for aldermanic, aldermanic districts, the second, third, and eighth, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, and I believe that we have um, uh, six people running for mayor, uh, including the incumbent. And whenever there's a lot of interest in the issues and some controversy, I think it gets reflected in the fact that you have just more people running. I'm interested in your perspective. Let's just start with the mayoral race. Why so many people running? What's, what's the issue or are there more issues? And, and any prognostications that you might have about the uh, outcome? Well, I, I live in the town of Sheboygan Falls, so I can talk from a different perspective. But I grew up in Sheboygan and uh, for many years I lived in, in the city and I do follow city politics because it is of course our biggest municipality in our in our county and the mayor is a very visible uh, political figure. Uh, one of the interesting things about uh, getting people interested both in running and in voting is there needs to be sort of a, a catch issue that uh, comes about. Uh, studies have shown that the reason people don't vote is that they don't find a relevance in participating. And as a result, we saw for many years very dismal return, uh, election turnouts. And most of it's been due to the people just didn't see a connect. Well, I think locally you've seen some issues that connect. Um, some on the financial scene, for example, with the Blue Harbor financing. Uh, but also uh, the park issue uh, where the police station is going to be located. Um, I always uh, tell people that uh, never underestimate the interest of the electorate and their ability to, to come out and 
render their opinion in the voting booth. And I think that's what you're seeing to some extent here, both in the number of candidates and probably uh, come uh, April, the turnout for the mayoral election. Um, people maybe don't understand school aid formulas and shared revenue formulas and their eyes glaze over when they see municipal budgets, but they understand parks and they understand police stations. And when they have a bit of an opinion about what something ought to be, uh, they'll come out and express it. I think the police station is a bigger issue than maybe some people on the city council um, initially thought. And I think the number of people running for the city council as well as for mayor are reflective of some of these very simple, very basic issues that uh, maybe some of the people who now have opposition uh, didn't think would be as important and as visible uh, as they are today. Yeah, the, the park. Um, it's amazing as I you know, move around the Piggly Wigglies and, and walk around the city and move around the city and talk with people. It's, it is amazing how people, it, it's an issue, right, Cal, where, where people get some, you know, they get something they can understand. Yeah. Um, you know, taxpayers, bills of rights and things there, you know, that's nebulous stuff. But um, it really cuts across some really interesting peoples and groups in Sheboygan, it seems to me. You've got obviously the people in the neighborhood um, in that particular ethnic community and, and you've got that, but then you've got some folks like myself, and not myself personally, but people like myself, who um, really haven't been involved, but have a sense of tradition of Sheboygan and its progressive roots and the fact that we've always had a, a park system that we're proud of. And, and the idea of even losing one of those um, is almost a sense of losing part of our heritage. And it's a real, as you know, political scientists would say, a salient issue, something people can really mm -hmm. uh, latch on to. Um, and I'm sure that's going to be part of this once we get through the primary, um, once we get down to uh, two candidates uh, squaring off. I think that'll be an interesting issue. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, Blue Harbor, of course, is continuing uh, to watch. I, I, there's some people who sit ac across over at, uh, on the other side of the river and uh, monitor carefully the number of cars that are over there and what kind of business they're doing there because they feel they've lost the war in the marina to begin with and now the second mm -hmm. phase of this is something they felt was another, you know, you know around town here is sometimes referred to as you know, our, our Pearl Harbor rather than Blue Harbor. So uh, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see how, this, how, how these issues are going to be discussed. You know, they're, pretty, they're pretty vehement about it. Now whether they're going to turn out and vote, whether they get enough people to show yeah. up, and how the candidates are going to finesse those issues, uh, especially the challenger. Um, it'll be interesting and fun to watch. Mm -hmm. I don't really have much more to add, but people were invested in the Blue Harbor, that lawyer's fee, that financial mm -hmm. uh, arrangement. Uh, some of the individuals in the city took the city to court, and they challenged the things that uh, went on. So they've invested their time in the process, and then you had the Sheridan Park with the uh, petitions. They invested their time going door to door. And that's fairly near to this election cycle, so it's still very relevant to, to uh, those people. In, uh, well, let me ask you this, Tom. You were on the city council for 14 years? Yeah. Just imagine this issue having come up at that point. Did, I mean, did you have a sense while, when you were on the council that the park system or taking a park away and to be honest, as far as I can tell, a park that's not used as much perhaps as other parks, that it would be, it seems to me, it's the third rail of Sheboygan politics these days. Any sense that it would have been like that for you on the city council? Uh, I don't, I, no, I don't have that sense. Because uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, we never addressed the issue. Uh, we never had an issue like that. Uh, the closest we had was the incinerator, uh, but that's not a park. In other words, for those people interested in the environment, uh, they wanted a they were concerned with uh, the uh, landfill being filled up with waste and they were hoping to use the incinerator to burn trash and create energy. And so when we suggested to shut down the incinerator because it was a financial albatross, uh, there was a lot of, no, you can't do that. Uh, that's contrary to the environment. So, but specifically parks, uh, I didn't, never had the issue. Yeah. It's just, it, it, just following up on what Ken said from talking to people and, and things that I'm hearing, I really am surprised by the sort of the, number one, the, the, the strength of people's emotions regarding the park, but also the duration. I mean, this has been a number of months that this issue has been going on, and people are still pretty flamed up about it. My um, uh, treasured mother-in-law, who's 83, just a wonderful woman, 
um, and does pay attention to politics, but a lifelong Sheboygan resident, but not real involved in the process, is horrified that they are taking the park. And just her perspective was very interesting to me. And, and, uh, and, and I've just heard, like Ken said, you know, this broad range of people who are really having some issues with it, and, and, and it's lasting, which, again, is a little unusual yeah. in, in, uh, in politics. Uh, you know, it's not only the, the issue lasting, but I think what uh, Tom mentioned, people did invest a lot of time in garnering petitions to try to get a referendum. And there's another issue that's parallel to this in the county level, and that's the ownership of the nursing homes. And there, too, people, there's a group of people who have invested time and energy in trying to get a referendum. Mm -hmm. And uh, once that is undertaken, it's, it's, a major, it's a major project. And when they're sort of maybe just lightly taken uh, by the elected officials who get the, are now the recipients of those and said, oh, well, it's our job to make a decision. You just put your positions here and go away. Um, that's almost throwing salt in the wound. And I, I think as I sit back and observe county board comments and local, um, sometimes city council comments about referendums, um, I think you have to be very careful on how you treat people who have uh, feel, feel very strongly about an issue and go out and garner signatures to try to have greater public input. Um, if I were in those polit political offices, I would probably take much more seriously uh, the efforts to try to get a referendum both on the nursing home issue as well as the park issue because uh, there are alternatives in those issues. It's not like uh, somehow the city or the county are in a corner and there's no option here but to do this one course of action. There are other options and sometimes when you have uh, people asking for input, you may find out surprisingly that you might have 80% of the people <laughs> saying this is the option they want. And well, if you're in public office and 80% of the people are saying this is the avenue and the road you ought to take, uh, you ought to listen to that. That's a message to you. And, and it comes up rarely enough. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons we elect people is so that they make the decisions, and we don't have the direct democracy that a that a referendum would would tend to imply. Uh, but from time to time, when you before I was an alderman, uh, I do recall the remember the garbage pickup issue. Were you here then? Oh sure. Curbside versus backyard or back, you know. Uh, I guess that went to referendum, and it was eight to eight. Uh, uh, when it came to a council vote, and the mayor had to break the tie, so it was a major issue. People were really concerned about it, and it survived. We we go to curbside, and people got used to it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a major issue. Sometimes well, people who are in public office, I think. Um, try to vest in themselves to all encumbency of a wisdom and say, I've been elected in a representative democracy to make uh, determinations. But like I said before, there are some issues, that's why we do elect people, to study the details of things. But there are some things that the people understand and, and they ought to have a role. Um, I went through the same uh, ringer, so to speak, on the Brewer Stadium issue. Um, oh, sure. The one reason I didn't vote for it is because, one, there was no end to the tax. It was open-ended. Secondly, none of the county boards nor the public were going to have an opinion in some way. I says, either you get, get let the county boards say yes or no on this issue or you put it to a referendum. I said, this is a major uh, expenditure of public dollars and people relate to this. They understand mm -hmm. this. They do. And you ought to let them have an input. And while well, obviously it didn't happen, and uh, hence I, I made a decision, but it was based on the fact that there was too little public input. Yeah, and it's the, well, you don't want to see sausage or legislation being made. <laughs> it gets a, gets a, little, uh, a little messy. And uh, you recall what happened uh, at that uh, time? The senator there from the Racine area? He right? changed his vote. And yeah. changed his vote and was, was he recalled or unelected? Yeah, he, was recalled. he was recalled. Recalled, well, we now have, you know, that's why we got people running. It's past the recall time, yeah. so they're running, and maybe they want to replace who's there. Yeah. Well, and those of us who have been elected officials know that a healthy democracy depends on contested elections. So few elections mm. in the state of Wisconsin in yes. general, legislative ones in particular, were contested in, in November. 
But when you're in the when you are the incumbent, it's awfully nice <laughs> if no one <laughs> else has no money. Opposition. I, mean, I know <laughs> it's just it's just the way it is. But um, we besides um, and I did count and I I thought there were s seven people running for mayor, but there are there are six and we'll have two two coming up. Um, any predictions on who's going to be the uh, the winner? And people will be able to tell because this will be televised afterwards. So, boy, the first time. In I got to think it's going to be Susha and Perez. I mean, I'm sorry, Perez and uh, Shram. Excuse me. I got to think those two are going to be yeah. going to shake down. And those are the two we face. Yeah, I, I would think so. I would think so. I too. think that one thing people ought to look at will be the margin of those two, because right. uh, if you find uh, the incumbent, for example, with a very large vote out of six candidates, that tells you something about people's comfort level with the incumbent. However, if maybe another major challenger comes out and has many more votes even than the incumbent, that shows uh, there's people are starting to gather around an opponent. So you can, you'll be able to read a little more into this besides the fact that you're going to have two people debating for the office come, come April. It's going to be a light turnout, but yeah. uh, if you get less, the, the incumbent gets less than 50%, you could say, well, yeah, that's He's in question. trouble. That's the question. That was, that was the question I was about to ask. Is if you take a look at, you know, all the, for lack of a better word, anti anti SRAM votes, if you put them all together, and I'm wondering if one can do that and get a sense of who, what kind of strength the challenger is going to have. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's diffi too difficult to extrapolate because if the voter turnout is is, is very very small, uh, once you know it's just too few little of a sample is what it amounts yeah. to yeah. to really extrapolate from that. But if you have a high voter turnout, which doesn't appear to be the prediction in this primary uh, this February fifteenth, but uh, it is something if there were a large turnout that you could probably extrapolate to say, yeah, indeed, this person is. Uh, in trouble, for example. It's my sense that with um, with the low, I, I agree it'll be Shram and Perez, although I have no idea how, what the percentages are going to be, but I do, with the low t voter turnout, and I, I do think that the issues, I mean, people are obviously very um, interested in the Sheridan Park issue, while being supportive of the police station at the same time, I don't think any of us is hearing, boy, we shouldn't have a new police station. Oh, no, I think that, we. That has been antiquated for years. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, no one can d doubt that we yeah. need a new police station. Um, but other issues that, you know, that the city faces, shared services, mm -hmm. the, d d you know, our ever-increasing taxes and so forth, I don't think any of those issues has really been drawn out by the, the, the remaining two candidates. So I think the rest of the political year is going to be interesting, or the political season. Um, we have in the second aldermanic district, this is mine, uh, incumbent Don Van Akron, who has been on the city council for a really long time, if my memory serves me correctly, being challenged by uh, Renee Susha, uh, the owner of the um, bed and breakfast down the block from me. We, they, we call it the old rice mansion. And um, uh, a newcomer um, who I think has been actually running in my district He's been working hard, Dustin Havens. Um, any ideas, comments on that particular race? I don't know much about the, the candidates except uh, oh, what, is the, what is the motivation for challenging the incumbent, I guess, is what I was, was talking and thinking about. Well, I think the park issue is involved, yeah. and I think the Blue Harbor issue is involved. Okay. So sort of, I think the standard menu that the incumbent was in place when these decisions were made and therefore challengers sort of say I want to be a player at the table uh, because I didn't agree with some of the things that were done previously. Well, Renee, Renee Susha was the one who brought, I, I think, suit on the uh, paying lawyers fees and which subsequently uh, turned out in uh, her favor in the sense that we didn't have to pay the large 400 and something thousand, we only had to pay 200 and something thousand. So she was involved in that, and of course her, the incumbent is Don Van Akron, and he supported paying the, the, uh, the dollars and to move on, and she was fighting it in court. I just think it's interesting because particularly in Sheboygan, I think name recognition is important. So we have two of the great political names mm, uh, in yeah. the community of Van Akron and a, and, uh, and a Susha. Susha. And so I, I think that race is going to be very interesting. But, well, if Haven has been campaigning in your district, then that's an unknown. But, but the, for as far as signs go, uh, Susha and uh, Van, Van Akron have 
the sign, won the sign war. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and we know all about those sign wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, third Aldermanic District, uh, Dennis Bauman is being uh, um, uh, challenged by Job Jose and Scott Lewandowski. Um, I don't know much about that. Uh, you know, again, talking about great old political names in Sheboygan County, Jose certainly qualifies as that name. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Any comments? I. No, I don't know anything about the race. I, I had uh, Edmund Jose as a student. He's a very good student. Uh, He's a bright guy. Bright, very bright individual. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad he ra he's running. I mean, uh, that's part of the process. Uh, mm -hmm. One of these times, he's going to win. And then um, in the 8th Aldermanic, we have uh, Marilyn Montemayor, uh, Jeannie Yench, and Jason Shane. Um, Marilyn's only been in office two years. This is her second term. Um, I think tends to vote a little less with the mayor, perhaps, than some of the other alder people, if my reading of the issues is correct. Um, there might be an instance where people are motivated by the issues, not so much as an opposing the, can the incumbent, but just wanting to get involved because of the magnitude that they, and the feelings, depth of their feelings on, an, on those issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You would think, though, Maryland's been, Maryland's votes have been on not supportive of the mayor on some of these issues. That's not, is I that the case? So the right. park issue from what I can understand. Yeah. So I'm interesting why these challenge, why the challenges are coming out. If mm -hmm. usually you get this kind of interest in a race when you've got people unhappy with the status quo. And although you know, sometimes you know people are looking to, you know, just strategically replace people who aren't voting the way that you want them to. I mean, I don't know. Let me let me, let me go back just to one of your first questions. Uh, why did I run? I mean, I, I was involved in campaigns and campaigns, and I decided I was always helping somebody else. <laughs> why don't I run myself? I had no issue, but I just thought, I'm going to run. Mm -hmm. So we just come off a presidential election. People are involved in politics. They may have no issues, mm -hmm. and they may just say, yeah. I want to run. I want to get involved. That could happen. Or and it's they're, hard they're victim these of geography. I mean, there just so happens that a person that might feel the same as the incumbent just finds out that, well, they're, they don't, if they want to run, they don't have any choice. <laughs> they, don't have any choice. <laughs> they can write it against somebody who they've even voted for previously and philosophically agree with. So. Yeah. And it's, you know, uh, it is running in an aldermanic district is really a manageable first step. Mm. I mean, you only need to get 20 names on, a, on, on your mm. nomination papers. Uh, which is doesn't take that much time, and it's really direct governing. The distance between you and the voter and you and the, the constituent is really pretty narrow, I would assume, as opposed to being a state senator, for example. So, interesting. Any, um, any prognostications on the aldermanic races? We're running out of time here already. Well, I think it would be interesting to, to move, as you move down from the mayor's race, to see the incumbent uh, council persons and mm -hmm. who voted in, in, in a certain way that engendered opposition, how well they do, and whether there's a correlation between how well the mayor as an incumbent is doing as well as incumbent uh, city council people, and whether they're in trouble because of the whole decisions of the body politic on Sheridan Park or Blue Harbor or whatever. All right. Well, an interesting first show. We had a lot to talk about. It's not a shy group, so thank you, and <laughs> we will meet again.